Fred Savage, that kid from The Wonder Years? Yeah, well, in 1989, he starred in a movie which, although was dismissed by adults and was generally labelled as an awful movie, to those who grew up watching it, they still grew a fondness of it. No, 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 not that movie. Not The Wizard. No, today we are talking about the lesser-known Little Monsters. Released in 1989, when young Fred Savage's career was taking off thanks to the hit sitcom The Wonder Years, Little Monsters tells the story of pre-teen Brian Stevenson who starts to believe that there is indeed a monster living under his bed, causing all kinds of pranks around his household, where he meets a childlike monster called Maurice, played by Howie Mandel, before his bald days of course, where Brian and Maurice form a bromance and go around the neighbourhood causing all manner of pranks and bad behaviour, where it turns out that the space underneath children's beds leads to the crazy monster world realm. However, things get complicated as Brian himself starts becoming a monster, where he must save his younger brother from the evil monster, Boy, who is the feared ruler of the monster world, along with his menacing henchman, Snick. Yeah, over the years, this movie has gotten a heap of flack, but I don't know why. It's just a crazy off-the-wall 1980s kids movie. A decade that was full of crazy off-the-wall kids movies. Why is it people can say, yeah, Gremlins, a story about hideous monsters terrorizing a small town? Hell yeah, that's awesome. But Little Monsters, a story about monsters living under kids' beds in a secret monster world? P please, that's just awful. Okay, I'm putting it out there. Little Monsters isn't high art, but it's not all bad either. I categorise it in the people hate it because it's popular to hate category. So today, because this channel is all about giving movies that have been hated a fair go, we are going to explore 10 things that you may not know about Little Monsters. Let's check it out. Good for you, too. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, right, Maurice, that's great! Oh, 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 yes! Number 10, the movie had a very limited release. When it comes to Fred Savage's early movie career, it seems that everyone remembers The Wizard. It was huge at the time, what with its Super Mario Bros. 3 advertising, along with its deadly power glove shenanigans. However, Little Monsters kinda slipped by unnoticed. Even as a kid, I was always confused as to why everyone made such a big deal over The Wizard, whereas Little Monsters was kinda swept under the carpet, so to speak. Well, that's because the movie itself got a very limited release when it came out for its theatrical run only being released in 179 American theatres. In fact, I think in Australia it skipped movie theatres entirely and went straight to video. I literally have no memory of this movie being advertised in theatres. And I only knew of its existence when I saw it at my local video store. And trust me, when I was a kid I watched lots of TV and shit. Number 9. Little Monsters Production Company Went Bankrupt When Little Monsters was in its production, Vestron were financing the film. But sadly, the worst thing that could possibly happen to the company financing a movie could happen. Vestron went bankrupt, meaning the rights to the movie were sold to MGM and United Artists, with Vestron only managing to maintain a small number of shares in Little Monsters, particularly in overseas countries. Well, not Australia, because once again, I don't even think that showed up here. Thus, this is why the movie had a very limited release in the first place. So really, when you think about it, Little Monsters was doomed from then on, as this bankruptcy instantly set the movie up for failure. It's kind of a shame, maybe the movie could have been a bigger deal had it been allowed to reach its full potential. Number 8. Monsters Inc. had a very similar premise to Little Monsters. Everyone knows and loves the classic Disney Pixar movie, Monsters, Inc. The 2001 movie where monsters from a monster dimension enter the real world via children's closets in order to scare them and pull pranks. 
in which a human child befriends one of the monsters. Well, whether intentional or coincidental, this plot is actually very surprisingly similar to that of Little Monsters. Only in Little Monsters, the monsters don't enter the real world via bedroom closets, but under the bed. And both movies have a main villain who is in charge of the monster world. However, poet and songwriter Laurie Madrid claimed that Monsters Inc. was a rip-off of a poem that she wrote called There's a Boy in My Closet. And artist Stanley Mouse also filed a lawsuit saying that the designs of the monsters in Monsters Inc. ripped off designs that he had created in some of his illustrations. Wow, either Monsters Inc. is one of the most unluckiest movies ever when it comes to being accused of using other people's ideas, or the creative minds behind Monsters Inc. did indeed use creative ideas from other resources. Number 7, The Wonder Years Connection. Yep, there was no getting around it. This had to be addressed and so it may as well get done with or everyone will be wondering why it didn't get mentioned. But there actually is a strong link between the Wonder Years and Little Monsters. Yeah, remember the Wonder Years? That TV show that started off with that song that went What would you do if I sang out a tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? In that Fred Savage plays main lead Brian, and Daniel Stern plays his crotchety father, Glenn. Both Savage and Stern played the character Kevin Arnold in The Wonder Years, with Savage playing the character as a pre-teen in the late 60s, and Stern was the grown-up voice of Kevin who narrated the story, in a sort of reflective storytelling kind of way. So yes, there's that irony that everyone loves to point out that Stern and Savage played the same character in The Wonder Years and Father and Son in Little Monsters. Number 6, Interesting Co-Stars. Daniel Stern isn't the only fascinating connection to Fred Savage when it comes to Little Monsters co-stars, as Fred Savage's real-life younger brother Ben Savage played his young brother Eric in Little Monsters. Ben Savage would become most well-known for starring in the comedy sitcom Boy Meets World. Also, Daniel Stern isn't the only Home Alone actor to appear in Little Monsters either, as Devin Ratray, aka Buzz from Home Alone, also stars in the movie as a school bully. And just like in Home Alone, he's a bully picking on a smaller kid. In fact, I guess you could say that this character is the genesis of the Buzz. And he isn't even in his final form yet. Margaret Witten, who is probably best known for her role in the Michael J. Fox comedy, The Secret of My Success, stars as Brian's mother, Holly. And check out the big brain on Brad. Yep, Brad from Pulp Fiction, aka Frank Whaley, stars as the main villain, Boy. Let's hope he doesn't say what too many times. And Rick DeCommon, best known for his role in The Burbs, is under heavy makeup as Boy's brutal right-hand man, Snick. How awesome would it be if Jules from Pulp Fiction turns up and threatens Boy to say what one more time? Ah, Little Monsters, the minty edit is a masterpiece. Number five, the sound behind the movie. The movie was scored by composer David Newman, and surprisingly his Little Monsters score often sounds quite moving and emotional, and even quite sad and somber when it needs to be. It would have been so easy to just go with any composer to give the movie a generic, wacky, crazy soundtrack. But Newman's score just gives the movie more of an in-depth, polished feel. Newman over the years has composed many, many, and I mean many movies, including Critters, Heathers, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, The Mighty Ducks, The Flintstones, The Phantom, Matilda, Ice Age, Serenity, and The Spirit, to name just a few. There are plenty more film scores to well-known movies that he has scored that I haven't mentioned. But whether you like the movies he has composed or not, you can't deny that he has had a pretty impressive career. Number 4. Little Monsters Had Impossible Box Office Competition I love the sound of breaking down. Poor Little Monsters never really stood a chance in the box office. Not only did it have the misfortune of having very limited release due to its finances going broke, but it was released in August 1989, with it going up against some very popular movies, including The Abyss, 
A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, Uncle Buck, Casualties of War, Sex Lies on Videotape, and Young Einstein. Yep, so chances are if you were around in the good old time of 1989 and went to the cinema, chances are you probably would have seen one of those movies instead of Little Monsters. As chances are Little Monsters probably wasn't even shown at a local theatre near you. However, the movie did increase in popularity with home video. Number 3. Movie Poster Madness And yes, you didn't think I wouldn't talk about the movie's posters, did you? There were actually a variety of posters that came out to promote Little Monsters. This is the one that was used on the Australian VHS cover. Just Brian and Maurice hanging out in front of a white background. Yeah, pretty exciting, right? The British VHS cover had this interesting artwork, which is the polar opposite. As there is just so much going on, it's hard to tell where my eyes are meant to be focusing. Fred Savage looks pretty pissed off here too. Seriously, what's up with him? Did someone just steal his pocket money or something? Was it Wayne? My favourite poster is this one. I just love the colours and I love how the characters stand out. And it pretty much shows that there's going to be a fun boy meets monster adventure. The main poster used to promote the movie theatrically was this one. Which I also like, which almost had a pop art feel. Although this poster does look very similar to the Drop Dead Fred poster that would come out a year later. Hmm. And with the arrival of DVD came this cover. And I love Maurice's face here. He looks like me when Friday is over and the weekend begins. Number 2. Gremlins Connection Howie Mandel played Maurice in Little Monsters, under heavy makeup, almost making him near unrecognisable. And of course, the monsters in Little Monsters are defeated by bright light. Well, this isn't the first time Mandel played a child-friendly creature who was affected by bright light, as Mandel also provides the voice for Gizmo in Gremlins. The irony being, both roles would require Mandel to say the lines, bright light, bright light. So it's nice to know that the movie has that Gremlins connection, as I do think the movies are similar in that they are both part of the same trend and genre. Also around about this time, Mandel was hosting and voicing the animated series Bobby's World, where he voiced the main protagonist Bobby. And not only that, but Mandel was also the show's creator. And for those who haven't seen it or can't remember Bobby's World, it was an animated series about a kid called, well, Bobby. Number 1. Filming Delays Yeah, bad luck just keeps coming up in regards to Little Monsters. In fact, production-wise, Little Monsters has to be one of the most unluckiest movies I've ever spoken about, as the movie had to be pushed back with its filming due to a fire taking place, which resulted in the destruction of several costumes and props that were made for the movie. As if the movie's production company going broke wasn't bad enough, there was also a fire. In all honesty, it's quite a miracle that the movie was even made and looked as polished as it did. After all, it did have all the odds against it. But sometimes it's the movies that have to be defiant and go against the odds which often become the most well-loved movies. I mean, say what you want to say about Little Monsters, but the movie had passion. And maybe it was the passion by those who were behind it who managed to keep the movie alive throughout the production downfalls. Well, that was my look into Little Monsters. No, it's not a perfect movie, but it still has its charm and its likability. And like so many others, it's an important part of my childhood. So I enjoy watching it. I enjoy being taken back down memory lane. And it's got good meaning. It means well. And the movie doesn't look cheap either. It's got special effects. It's got interesting set designs and good makeup. Once again, why is it that we can say Gremlins is great the Goonies is great, Labyrinth is great, but Little Monsters, hell no, we must cast that into the village with our fire and pitchforks. I say just ignore the naysaying and give it a shot. It's worth a look, especially if you love those crazy 80s kids movies. Anyway, I'm Minty, and no monsters better be pissing in my apple juice bottle, I tell ya. See ya.